Dana White delivers an impressive speech about President Donald Trump. Take a look. So the one thing that stands out with me is loyalty. And the one thing I think you appreciate about uh, the former president, maybe future president, is he was there early with you. How much does that matter to your relationship? Yeah, lo loyalty is really important to me, and, and he's been a very good friend to me. Um, and he's a massive fight fan, you know? And it's not this thing, oh, the UFC got popular, so Trump, but whatever. Trump was the guy who reached out to us when we couldn't get venues and had us come to the Taj. We did our first two shows over there, and when you think about it then, the Trump brand here, the UFC brand here, he showed up for the first fight and stayed till the last fight yeah. for both events. He's a guy who would reach out to me my entire career when good things happen and say, hey, congratulations, I always knew you were gonna do it. When they step out, what is it like? Uh, why, does, why does your audience seem to like the former president so much? Well, the thing is with our fan base and our fighters, we're all very aligned in, in, in life and everything else. And it's not that it's any real um, political side. <laughs> We're for common sense. It's all everybody's looking for. Everybody wants the same thing. There's no difference. And, and anybody in this room, if you let all the, the media BS go away, we all want to make a good living. We all want to get a house. Right. We want some nice cars. We want kids. We want to take care of our kids. We want our kids to, to do well and go to college. Everybody wants the same thing. It's not like we don't. It's just right. the media has created this, this divide in this country that that needs to go away, and, and hopefully soon it will. Where does he rank at 77? Number one. Number one. You take any of the greatest fighters of all time, Trump is number one. The most resilient human being that I have ever met in my life. In what respect? Why keep doing this? You yeah. know, you got money, you got a great life, you got whatever, why keep doing this? And the one thing that I can tell you, and this is a fact, this guy loves this country. Right. You said recently that this is the number one sports league in, in the world, mm -hmm. in the country. Why do you in feel the that world? Way? Yeah, I mean, in the world. When you think about the, the UFC, uh, you know, back in the day, when when you were working here, uh, you know, people would laugh if you thought that this would overtake boxing. And also, uh, you have taken this uh, hard work, and you said, okay, America, I'd like to shine here, but I also want to be a force around the world. What are you doing now with Abu Dhabi? What are you doing now in Saudi Arabia? What are you doing now to expand this global brand? Well, the beautiful thing that I've always said since day one, I said, this will eventually be the biggest sport in the world because no matter what color you are, what country you come from, what language you speak, we're all humans. And fighting is in our DNA. We get it and we like it. It makes sense and everybody understands it. And when you find a guy who is the baddest dude or woman in the world and they come from where you come from and they speak like you speak and they look like you, everybody rallies around them. Right. So, you know, th there isn't a fighter in the world, a, a, a country in the world that we can't find a fighter from. You can't have a sport where you allow blows to the brain stem in order to paralyze your opponent. John McCain tried to stop it. Yeah. And, and here we are today, and, and uh, it, it is a global sport. We have the largest pay-per-view provider in the world. Uh, we break records everywhere we go. The world's gone soft, and everyone's got the man getting in touch with their sensitive side. <laughs> There's a lot of adrenaline in your stands, in the octagon, and the people promoting it, the people on the stage. Are you the anomaly? Probably, yeah. I, I would agree that, that, that the world has gone soft, and I would agree that, that we are not in any way, shape, or form. You also say, but if you are not, and you're a savage with today's landscape, you can make it killing easier. I mean, when I grew up, there was a lot of old money. You know what I mean? And if you didn't have old money, it was, it was harder to make it. It was harder to, there's a lot of disruption now. There's never, ever been more opportunity in my lifetime than there is right here and right now. And if you are one of these young kids, who has some heart and some grit and some determination and you want to win, there's never been more opportunity than there is right now. So a 19-year-old Dana White had to go make money. You had to be a bellhop. You had to be a paver. You you had to have side jobs. You would, Or else there was no safety net. For people that have a safety net, how do you keep the hunger if you don't need to be have that? And, and uh, different than hunger, I, I think, I say this all the time, the big problem with a lot of people in life is 
they don't know what they want to do for the rest of their life. I was very lucky in that I always knew what I wanted to do. But which was the be in the fight business. It, I, it wasn't this was what I but I wanted to be in the fight business, right? No matter w what it was. And I started my way from the bottom and I worked my way up to the top. But these jobs like paving roads, uh, being a bellman and all this stuff. These are the type of jobs you have to have growing up. Like people tell me all the time, you work hard. I mean, I get to work every day at nine and I leave at nine. Now, you know who works hard? The guys up at EJ Paving and, and, and Massachusetts who are paving roads every day and digging ditches and guys that pour concrete, guys that are doing roofing jobs. That's hard work. So I ended up reaching out to Rogan and uh, you know we hit it off and that's it. He said, wait a minute, so you're telling me I can come to the, the sport that I love the most in the world, have the best seat in the house and talk about it on TV? I'm in. He did the first 13 for free and the rest is history. He's now the biggest podcaster in the world and uh, he's the greatest combat sports commentator of all. Trump's resilience is truly unmatched. His ability to bounce back no matter the challenges or criticism he faces is nothing short of remarkable. He's shown time and time again that he can endure and overcome anything that comes his way. It's inspiring to see someone with such unwavering determination and strength 